Well, here we are. This utility bed has to go on our crew cab. So, we're gonna do that. If you've ever had a job that you just absolutely dreaded and didn't want to do, well, this job is that for me. I really, really don't want to do this. I'm not looking forward to it at all. But it's got to be done. So, let's get started. So, my plan here, I've got her backed in. I'm going to get everything loose and lift this thing up. I don't know, with jacks and jack stands and wooden beams and I'm gonna get her up in the air and then I'm gonna scoot this truck out from underneath it. And then I'm gonna take the crew cab and back her in underneath, get her settled in there and then bolt her down again. I haven't crawled under this yet. Well, not since I got the truck long ago. So I don't remember how this bed is held down. I don't know if it's clamps or bolts or if it's just welded. That would be unfortunate. Standard upfitter procedure for this is like they use U-bolts or clamps, like three inch, three quarter inch diameter U-bolt clamps to you know, hold the body to the frame. But I don't know. I don't know anything about this. It looks like there's some welding going on back here in the trailer hitch frame area, so I'm going to have to take a look at that as well. Hopefully the trailer hitch is just bolted to the frame and it's not like welded to the truck or anything. I am going to try to lift her up. Now back here, it's going to be fairly simple because this is a highly reinforced area and it's a strong steel and, you know, I can easily put things under this. Up here, it's not going to be so easy, and I don't want to bend anything. You know, these sheet metal edges come down here, and you don't want to put anything right on the edge, or you're going to crimp the edge in. So I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do that. I can't run anything in front. I can't run it under, obviously, because the truck has to be able to scoot forward. So, you know, it all has to be on the edge there that the truck can come out from underneath it. Unless I can get it up high enough that you know it'll clear the tire and come out from under that and that might be what i resort to if i can lift it that high we'll see the first step of this is to get all of the mechanical electrical and fuel lines loose i have fuel lines hooked in for the generator so all that stuff has to be disconnected so that we can uh, get this thing prepped for getting up in the air so let's crawl under there and take a look at what we got all right let's take a look <sighs> got cobwebs okay so we've got this brace here it looks like that's welded to the bumper but it's also welded to this cross brace back here. It's welded. That's welded with this piece of angle iron to the body. How did they do that? All right. What else do we have here? Come on, scoot. <laughs> So, I had a continuous weld at it. Well, that's fantastic. All right, so this is going to have to be cut for sure. Uh, trailer hitch is just bolted to the frame. Doesn't look like. They fastened any part of the trailer hitch to the body, so that's good. I'm going to be moving the trailer hitch over 
because it's a nice trailer hitch. Um, still got the original label on it, actually. It's fairly new. Reese. Anyway, um, that's going to be coming over along with the fuel tank. How did they fasten the body on here? How did they fasten it on here? It's holding it in the back. Okay, we got we got some framework there. Got some bolts and brackets. So bolted to the frame okay it looks like it's bolted to the frame so what holds it up huh is there not a lot holding this body on that doesn't make me feel very good what's <laughs> what's holding it on in the front again these cross supports it's just resting on top of the frame these cross supports aren't actually resting on anything well, why why would you do that you should put some kind of blocking in here at the very least what kind of so there's one bolt back here i think this is kind of all coming back to me now this bolt here there's one of those on each side. Oh, goodness, I remember looking at this before and saying, well, there's not a lot holding this body on. Okay, and that's it. That's all it's holding it on in the back. Well, goodness, goodness gracious. Um, okay, I gotta crawl under the front and take a look then, I guess. All right, let's take a look under the front. All right. Dirty down here. Well, frame cross brace. Yeah, okay, here's the here's the clamps I was talking about that body upfitters usually use. So they've got those and Well, that's that's about it. I'm not seeing anything else. Uh, well, I don't know what to make of this. Um, yeah, honestly. Same thing over on that side. Hmm. So, uh, in the back I was wrong. I said there was one bolt. There's actually two bolts per side holding that on. So, in the back there's four bolts holding it. And there's these clamps in the front, which have two bolts each. And it looks like only one structural support were added were on the frame but none of the other supports are on the frame blocked or otherwise goodness so there's those braces they added i guess they just welded them on I don't know. I don't like the fact that those cross braces are completely missing. It looks like they would have sat on the frame. I don't know. This thing is worse underneath than I remember. When I say worse underneath, it's it's bad. It's uh, I, I don't like the fact that there's cross braces missing. I feel like I should replace them. There's not a lot of strength to the bed without those braces in there. Because there's only a couple braces, really. And the ones that are actually resting on the frame don't go completely across. Well, that's not good for any truck bed. I, I'm not liking this. 
I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board and reconsider some things here. I, honestly, I'm not 100% certain if I want to reuse this body. In theory, if I sell this, if I take off my equipment and tools and sell this as it is, you know, it might be worth enough money to buy a cheap replacement bed or even some kind of topper or something or enough to repair that to get it on. I don't know. I gotta go back to the drawing board on this. I gotta do some thinking and some calculating and see what I, what I actually want to do here. Well, there's a couple things I gotta take off this truck and I'm gonna reuse on the blue one. I'm gonna take this gas tank off and its associated paraphernalia and I'm going to take the trailer hitch because the trailer hitch is actually in really good shape and this gas tank is practically brand new and I don't see any point in selling them with this ratty old truck. Um, I'm pretty much taking all the good stuff off this truck and that these are good things and they're probably more valuable than the entire truck so I'm going to take them off. Let's start with the fuel tank. tank is out I'm gonna clean it I did decide to take the option of snipping everything because this is gonna be completely redone this has a vent and a return which that does not have a return so we'll be capping the return I snipped the wires of course because we're gonna be resplicing those except for the ground which I pulled intact I know I didn't film it, it's hard to see under there. I tried to pull it out of the brackets by pulling these and I got this nut off, but this strap would not come off and it's actually bent. It looks like whoever put it on bent this strap part here. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that on for now. I'm gonna leave this the, the supports on and I'm just gonna bolt it up to the frame like that. But first we're gonna do some pressure washing, clean this thing off at least, make it look semi-decent. Oh well, there, maybe now you believe me that it was a new tank a couple years ago. <laughs> a lot cleaner. Let's move that over to the truck. Have the fuel tank moved over from the 86 truck. Uh, I added a vent to the vent line and capped off the return line because obviously this doesn't have a return and that's the send and wired up the sender and grounded the tank. So that tank is in and this cleaned up pretty good i don't see any holes or leaks in this there are lots of hose clamps and zip ties i'm sure that's perfectly fine so i believe our fuel system is complete other than when i tie into it for the generator and i'm putting that off because i i'm putting it off because I still got to crawl into the truck to do that. I can't do that from above. So either way, it doesn't matter if there's a bed on it or not. The generator I'm talking about, if you're not familiar with it, is a generator that's currently mounted on our utility body. I have this generator plumbed into the tank on the truck with an electric pump. And then all you have to do is activate it with a switch up here. I will wire and plumb that later, but for now, 
to get the truck running and driving and on the road. We're not going to worry about little niceties like that just yet. We can always run that from a separate gas tank if we need to. So the sharp-eyed among you may have noticed in past videos that the e-brake, the parking brake on this truck is not hooked up. And it wasn't when I got the truck because the line was rusted through and broken. And right now, it is home to that little guy. <laughs> he didn't like me. He didn't want to be on video, I guess. Anyway, we got to hook up the ends on those here and there. And I got a new cable and new clips. And we'll just route that. And then, hopefully, assuming these aren't locked up, which I'm pretty sure they aren't because I've already driven the truck, you know. Then we'll have a working parking brake, which is very important for me because I often forget to put the truck in gear. I haven't actually owned, personally owned, a manual transmission truck for, well, a long time, 15, 20 years, so... I'm going to have to remember to start putting it in gear or putting the parking brake on, so... This will help me remember, I hope and I think, I think and I hope. Anyway, new cable, we're going to run that, put that on. I won't bore you with those details. And then I think we'll have most everything done here uh, that would stop us from putting a bed on. So then we can move on to... Things like the bed and trailer hitch and bumper and all that assembly. So let's get that on. All right, we have the e-brake cables, parking brake cables hooked up and they actually appear to work. So we got a parking brake cable now. So I believe that literally everything mechanical on here works now. Well, if I'm going to put this bumper back on, which clearly I am, I need to resolve this custom bracketry they've done here. I'm not sure which is their bracketry and which is original. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is probably original. Everything else, probably not, maybe? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm just going to cut all this off to the best of my ability. And, which I think means cutting here and here. Hopefully they didn't weld that in there. Well, let's get cutting and take a look at what we got. I have the bumper and the trailer hitch on. Got some new hardware there, because I think I cut some of the old hardware off. But anyway, trailer hitch from the 86, we got the bumper back on. And why do we have the bumper back on, you ask? This rusty old hunk of junk? Well, that's because I'm putting this back on for now. This utility bed, it was just far far too rusty and everything to go to all the work to transplant it so i'm not going to do that right now and i could show you underneath but it's kind of hard to see up in the nooks and crannies down there but not only is it very holy but they kind of butchered it to put it on this truck which i, I didn't know because i never got a good look at it before with you know gas tanks and stuff in there and everything in the way underneath 
but now that I see it they did some welding and stuff on the back and they've kind of made their own bracketry and things for the front except that frankly I don't know how they cleared the gas tank because it was a near thing I'm surprised that it didn't crush the gas tank or cause any damage let me show you kind of anyway the utility the bracket they welded on came like right across here and I, I you know I can't believe that even a little bit of vibration or whatever would start to ruin this and well yeah it's it's a mess this bed is a mess however for the most part the struts underneath are okay there's a little bit of rusting and some blowout there but and some of the smaller struts in the middle of course but the struts that hold it down to the frame are i mean they're there the bed is very holy and i was wondering what i should do i've been going back and forth with this and back and forth which bed i want to put on i can't afford to buy a nice bed or a new bed or even a nicer bed at the moment i listed this for sale hoping somebody would want it at the very least for the bed sides which are not really very rusted out there's a lot of salvageable metal there because a set of bedsides is very expensive and well anyway nobody wanted it i've had it listed since i took it off just no interest and i listed it i don't know basically at like scrap value the end result is that i'm going to put on the bed that is going to be easier to remove when i can find the solution that i want or create the solution that i want so for right now this is going back on there although this bumper is mm, it's just not great but it's better than nothing and the outer structure the outer shell is pretty good i just it's there's lots of rust in the joint here i don't know this is an aftermarket bumper this doesn't have a license plate light it was part of the bracket which was blown apart when i got it no light it's gone so I think I'm going to have to find a replacement bracket like that with a light. That's okay. I'm sure I can find something. It's one of the reasons I say it's probably an aftermarket bumper, but I don't know what they had going on here, but holes and I don't know. It's holy. Anywho, I'm going to make do with this for now. I can throw toolboxes in the bed, and I do have some toolboxes on that trailer back there that I can put in this, but... I mean, it's not going to be great. I, I don't, I don't like working out of a truck bed without the proper equipment. You can get, uh, you know, the slide-out drawers like a decked system, and you can get, you know, slide-out trays. Uh, you can get contractor's caps, but when you're working on a contractor's cap, the top of the bed is like here. So everything from there down, you don't have toolboxes, but you have the boxes on the contractor's cap. I don't know, if I could get a contractor's cap and the deck system and a slide-out tray for on top of that, I could probably work with that. Uh, I'm going to have to repair the tailgate because it's just completely blown out. I'm, by repair, I mean I'm basically just going to weld pieces on until it's back together again. But we'll get to that. All right, let's... Get to salvaging this hunk of junk as best we can. Well, there she is with the bed just sitting there. I gotta bolt it back down, but before I do that, I gotta decide what I'm doing with this. 
Anyway, I think I'm done for today because rain's a coming. Got to clean up my gear. Uh, accidentally bent it a little worse, but I'm going to take the tractor and push that out when I have it all put back together and actually bolted down. They're going forward and I couldn't see very well and I didn't realize I was pushing the whole truck forward. <laughs> It's lucky I realized it before I reached the house. Anyway, kept getting down and going, I wonder why this thing isn't moving forward. <laughs> Idiot. Anyway, we got this rusty mess back on here. I uh, don't know what I'm, quite what I'm going to do with this. Besides, between the wheel wells, uh, that's where the, that's where the struts, the supports are not doing so hot. So I don't know if I just, I don't know. I might weld a plate between the wheel wells. I mean, back here along the edges and up front along the edges, it's still, the struts are joined and it's joined to the sides. Unfortunately, and one of the reasons it's bent is because my hook slipped off the rusty part down there. The, the hook slipped off and it caught on this and then it just bent this, so. I don't know. I might I might weld an angle in here. Uh, just I mean, none of this is going to look great, but I just need to get it strong enough to work temporarily till I can find something that will work. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was taking it off, my hooks ripped right up through the stake pockets there. I, I've never seen anything quite like that happen before, and my hooks aren't tremendously strong. They're just Harbor Freight hooks. And that's fine because I'm not going to use the stake pockets. I'm going to take out their hooks because they're going to, you know, they're not really structurally sound. Uh, and that one ripped out too. They just went, and I lifted the bed up. I mean, this, this bed is, is very much junk, but it will be easy to take off again if and when that happens. Basically, if and when I find a better bed for this. The bed is bolted down as good as I'm going to bolt it for now. I used plates and ran them through because, you know, I cut the old bolts out. So there's a little bit bigger hole there. And obviously I'm not using carriage bolts. So, uh, you know, that was fun to tighten it since there's just one of me. But I managed to put a vice grips under the frame and come up into the bed and tighten it that way. So that worked. Uh, the tailgate is still blown out. I am either going to need to fix that if I keep the tailgate or if I get a contractor's cap with doors in the back I can just pull that tailgate off and that would be ideal because I really don't like climbing over tailgates. I've never liked it and I still don't. That's why I had my utility bed but though I took off the ridiculous metal that they put on there to hide their previous sins which you know it's mainly drilling a bunch of holes like Swiss cheese in there and top one over the tailgate I guess was there because they you know slammed the top of it at one point but that's the least of our worries with the tailgate and that had sharp corners that were getting me so I took that off I can't deal with that I really don't feel like getting cut every time I lower my tailgate got to deal with this fuel system uh, I think since this bed is so junky I'm just gonna drill a hole in the side <laughs> I think that's the way I'm gonna handle that so uh, I will do that. I also, I need to get the lights back together and show you that in a minute. I don't have any of this wiring back together in the rear, none of the rear harnesses together. I will do that. I gotta get my trailer harness on. And once that is ready, which will almost be road legal, uh, I ordered a bolt-on tailgate light or a license plate light that just bolts on here of your license plate so that will make that road legal and i'm waiting on a fuel hose to hook that tank up because the old hose was very old and holy so i'm going to be waiting on that i don't have a way to fill that gas tank yet that's all sealed up i have that taped shut so it doesn't get any gunk in it 
um, I'm gonna clean the bed out a little bit and maybe weld in some supports but it's on the truck for now so yeah I'll move on to some of the finishing steps here that are kind of boring which is you know drilling holes for that fuel tank and I'll show you that when I have that done and getting some of these lights and things back together the trailer hitch bumper configuration arrangement turned out about perfect that's about where I'd want it just hidden under the bumper there uh, the height is decent just like it was on the other truck so that is all right this bumper is on kind of holy but you know if we get in an accident I don't care about the bed anyway so I guess whoever painted this truck last they didn't care about this and they just painted over this well you wouldn't think this is important because it's hidden behind the lens but when your bulb is sitting in here deep down in uh, a lot of the light goes backwards and stuff from the bulb because it's a round bulb So you want at least a bright or reflective surface back there or your lights are never going to be bright enough So I'm gonna brush these down get some of the gunk off and then I'm gonna see I think I have a silver or white paint that I can spray them with and that well you can kind of see the original Silver under there. That's what they're supposed to be got 15 coats over it, but uh there it is that's that's the kind of surface that it's supposed to be so it reflects more light so i'm gonna take care of those and then we can get those screwed on once we get the bulbs in and so forth well i know chrome spray paints really 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 suck but <laughs> this is particularly bad i don't know all this rust-oleum premium chrome paint uh i don't know maybe it's different when it dries you know, I'm not trying to do a good job here, but all I want is a little brightness, reflectiveness. I don't know. We'll see. I suppose it's better than black or blue, whatever was on there, but <laughs> it's still pretty awful. Well, I've got the rear light fixtures <laughs> painted up. That is the worst chrome paint. <sighs> anyway at least it's lighter than it was before so i'm gonna clean up these covers get this button back up and then <clears throat> that part will be done daylights are on so now i don't know i full I feel like we've come a full 360 with this truck <laughs> except that underneath and inside and up front it's a lot better than it was I don't know it just it looks the same on the outside this is not what I had planned for this truck I really wanted a utility bed but I guess that was not to be yet if anybody in the Jacksonville Florida area or close by has a contractor's cap with the the accessible bins on the side for real cheap you just want to get rid of it or it needs a little bit of work or something and you want to get rid of it then I'll be happy to buy one uh, I can't find one close to me that's cheap enough there's some like you know two three hours away but I'm not quite willing to drive that far just yet because I don't have that kind of time but there she is so next we're going to address inside the bed and figure out what we're gonna do for tool storage and accessibility. The problem I have with these truck beds and I don't like working out of them is reaching over the side for toolboxes or stuff and it's just, especially trucks that are three quarter one ton trucks that are higher, it's, it's really difficult. And I don't wanna lower this thing. I know some people take these crew cab square bodies and just slam them down to the ground, but that, really makes it hard driving through farmers fields to get the tractors and equipment and stuff like that so that would really inhibit the usability of this truck for actual work so we're gonna have to figure out the tools oh and I got to figure out the fuel situation here probably just gonna you know drill a hole in the side or something show you that when I have that done well I ordered this license plate light it just you know bolts on with your license plate bolts and that'll make us road legal other than the fuel fills I have to I got a line for that all right we're legal 
tried to get antique plates for this thing in Florida, but it's way old enough, but apparently there's a weight limit for antique plates. This three-quarter ton truck I got antique plates for. This three-quarter ton truck they will not give me antique plates for, so that's what it is. And I guess it's going to be a 70D kind of night, whatever that means. I'll have the passenger side tank hooked up to the fill. And now I remember how badly this was hooked up before. None of the angles match with the fill pipe that they have on the truck and the bed. And that's because this is a newer bed and an older fill pipe. And the, this is the kind of fill pipe that would come through the side of the bed. And I believe it would be like over here and everything. Anyway, I had to cut some hoses and shorten some things to get it to align because and it's still not aligned properly but you'll be able to get the gas nozzle in it and it's downhill it's got the vent attached correctly <sighs> that's all that's important at this point so yeah i need a gas cap for that but we'll get to that now we can get to the now we can get on to the passenger side tank and for that i'm going to do one of these uh don't try this at home, kids. I'm gonna drill out the rivets on this so that I have a nice angled inset. And I'm gonna put it over here because I don't care about this bed because it's a rusty piece of junk falling apart anyway. So <laughs> I'm just gonna drill a hole and you can see there's already a crease there because it's so rusty and I need to run some screws in there probably to hold that panel in, but get this all set up first and Anyway, I'll show you when I got something. It's just cut and drill and all that, fairly simple. I'm not gonna care what, it's lo what it looks like, so we're just gonna ramrod into that thing. Passenger side fuel fill is in. Probably can't see anything down there, but in these beds on both sides, there's a cutout here for the tube where the fuel fill would go, even if it doesn't have one on that side. You can see they have the pass through kind of welded and molded into the bed. So that's in the same place that a square fuel door would go. So if anyone ever wanted to put a square fuel door in there, they could. But, you know, this bed is shot. I don't care, so I'm never gonna. So we got a fuel door over here. With the original gas cap on there. I don't like locking gas caps. Don't do that, people. You just make it harder for people working on it down the road if you leave it set. And I got that one on, so... I think I just have to weld up that exhaust hole down there that I found and then we'll be done for now. That's going to be it for this installment on the 78 Crew Cab. There are some future projects that I want to do to this thing and namely the reason I got it in the first place is that my goal is to do a diesel conversion on it but not a Cummins diesel like everyone else does. I'm probably Probably, unless I find a really cheap Cummins diesel, I'm probably going to be doing something a little different on this and something that 
it hasn't been done a whole lot so stay tuned for that i have to find that engine and i'm probably going to have to fabricate a bell housing to go to whatever transmission i choose and here comes the rain anyway as always thanks for watching we appreciate any likes comments subscribes and thank you for watching truly i couldn't do it without everybody who watches these and motivates me to do more so i'm going to go inside before i continue to get soaked but thanks for watching get a muffler what in the world we are go fighter jets again. I don't know if you can see them. Anyway. Uh, let's wait until those F-22s go by. Goodness, they're loud. Oh, is the Navy flying over again? Or is that United Airlines or something? I don't know. Always flying over. Original bumper. Oh, don't trip over that. Note to self, that is a lot of metal.